Hi Virgo, welcome to your May 2023 Astro Taroscope with me, Raphael, from Radiant Reality. It's an absolute pleasure to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for joining me. Quick note, these readings are for your Sun, Moon and Ascendant sign, though if you're only going to watch one, I do advise that you watch your Ascendant sign because there's so much astrology in them, it's likely that it's going to be the most accurate for you. With that said, remember they are general readings. Not everything's going to resonate with everybody and that is just fine. You should always use your own discernment. Before we start, as always, I would like to bless my decks of cards with all forms of love, light, peace, prosperity, and abundance. And I pray that the messages that come through are ultimately clear and concise. They help you on your path to your highest vibrational good. So we're going to pop these to the side. Those will be for your uh, weeks of the month and also for your moons. And we're going to get into it. So the first transit that I wanted to highlight for you is the movement of Venus into your 11th house in the sign of Cancer. So Venus, the lady of luxury, pleasure, joy, uh, money even, and resources, and even value comes into your 11th house. And so one way that this could show up on a practical level, this could really grease the wheels for community work that you're doing, uh, especially with friendships, social connections, or even with so with or through social media. Uh, you could really sort of, you know, could really enhance you. Like people might really be gravitating to the towards the stuff that you're sharing, towards the things that you're putting out into the world. So that could be really nice. It could also really, like Venus can also really help you here, start to build or to envision what what your higher goals and aspirations actually look like. On a more practical level, this could be that you start attracting or pulling in people that can actually help you. Because remember, the 11th house is benefactors. So this could be that you start to meet people that can really help you build some of those longer term dreams and goals. Uh, and it could also start making friendships easier and better and, uh, you know, and nicer, really, uh, especially because you've had Mars moving through this space. So maybe, you know, there's been harsh words. Maybe the community is, you know, that you're attached to or attached to have been a bit much or you know maybe there's been spats over social media etc whereas now you know Venus coming into the 11th she's like yep yeah, no what we're gonna we're gonna do some nice stuff here and remember um Venus is is uh, uh diplomacy so I love this for negotiations that require that kind of thing, especially if it's like mending or healing relationships in some regard, uh, especially where it comes to financial or broadcasting matters. So for this, you've got the Queen of Wands. So I like this actually for you kind of maybe not well yes for you asserting your position in some way right also connecting to a fire sign woman aries leo sagittarius got this with the four of pentacles so this could be an idea like a financial idea or endeavor and look right then you got the ten of pentacles so this could bode very well for your finances maybe this is an idea maybe it is a connection that comes in whoever that queen of wands is she's likely to be very good for you or even play some kind of supporting role in terms of you looking at how you can get the most uh, out of your money your materials but also how to generate more of those there's a lot of focus on the home in these cards though as well because the four of pentacles for those of you that are like maybe your higher goal or aspiration at the moment is to save to buy a home or is to buy a home or to refurbish a home this suggests that you will absolutely be able to do this um, and this queen of wands an aries leo sagittarius woman is likely to be somebody that will help or assist you on that path uh utilize this right especially because venus rules women and that queen there, you know, she's helping. Now, in um, the next transit that I wanted to look at for everybody was the 11th of May. The moon is going to conjunct Pluto and both of those are going to oppose. It's a dissociated opposition because it's not by sign. Like if it were by sign, the moon and Pluto in Aquarius would be uh, opposing uh, Mars in Leo, but it's not. Mars is in Cancer still. But it, by orb, it's still an opposition. And when I saw this, I was like, mm, I'd be remiss if I kind of just glossed over the fact that this is happening. So that uh, Aquarius energy of the moon conjunct Pluto is happening in your sixth house. Now, moon Pluto 
intense feelings, right? The intensity of your feelings, something coming very much to the surface about how you feel uh, and potentially, you know, really feeling very deeply over something around this sixth house energy. Now, um, it could be about some kind of uh, routine or structure that has now become obsolete, right? Remember, Pluto reveals the whether things are or are not useful. And if they got to go, then Pluto will say, look, that's got to go. So, you know, your routine your rituals, the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, you could become acutely aware of what is or isn't working at this time. Sixth house is also your health and vitality. It's a maintenance house. It's how you, the sixth house is how you maintain the things that you want to keep, right? So it's the stuff you have to do in order to keep it well. So your own health, this could, touch wood, maybe escalate a health matter. It's a possibility, right? And, um, this could also be maybe the thing that you're looking at in terms of your routines and rituals. Maybe this highlights to you, well, you know what, you say you don't feel very well. You've, you know, drunk two litres of Coke for the last, seven, you know, six weeks straight. Uh, you know, every other day you, you're drinking two litres of Coke. And so it's like, OK, fine. You know what? Yes, that makes sense. Um, so it could be, you know, it could be maybe a little bit more intense or a little bit more severe than that as well. Maybe you have like a healing crisis of some sort. Very possible. Um, and then finally, the other thing with this, um, it's like the realisation that you have you'll then need to act on it, all right? So it, this could be, you know, it could be one of those things. And because it's a, a last quarter square moon, that will be action required, right? So once you've got the knowledge of what is causing the problem or that there is a problem or an issue, you then have to do something about it. Uh, and finally, um, also the sixth house is, is enemies, hidden enemies at that time sometimes as well, which means... Something or someone may be revealed to you that has either worked at cross purposes to you or actually doesn't have your best interests at heart and you didn't even realise it because they were right under your nose. For this, you have the Queen of Pentacles. What do we see? Two queens. Two queens represent sincere friends. The Queen of Pentacles is you, right? Whether you're a man or a woman, uh, Virgo, or however you identify, that is you, right? The Queen of Pentacles is Virgo energy. So I find this very, very interesting. Um, then you've got the star card. It's interesting because all of this is happening in uh, Aquarius, right? Well, certainly the moon conjunct Pluto is happening in Aquarius. And interestingly enough, the sixth house is actually the house that is ruled by Virgo. So <laughs> it's kind of interesting the way this has all come up. And then you've got the six of wands, right? So there's that link to the sixth house again. Um, what this tells me is you will overcome, right? Whatever it is that's presented to you, whoever it is that is presented to you to not have your best interests at heart, don't worry too much about it. Um, especially because it's not necessarily that, you know, you're just kind of like, oh, I'll just turn the other cheek. A friend, a sincere friend, someone that genuinely loves, cares about you or respects you, goes to bat for you, right? Like maybe you don't even need to defend yourself because someone sort of rears up in your favor and says, no, hang on a sec that's my person and you know dot 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 whatever they say after another way that this could show up for you as well is your long term range long term range of plans or goals maybe you get an understanding of where it is that the small wins are actually contributing to that bigger goal so you have to refine your routines the third transit jupiter is moving into your ninth house of taurus the Lord of Expansion, Growth, uh, Happiness, Levity, Healing even, is coming into the ninth house uh, of blessings and cosmic connection, right? The ninth house in ancient astrology was called the house of God. You've heard me say this before. And it's the space in the chart where you connect to the cosmos. It's your higher wisdom, goals, beliefs. Uh, it's also the energy where you connect to the wider world. This is foreign travel, connection to foreign places, distant lands, etc. This could really help you expand that. You might start doing a lot more travel uh, from this time onwards. Now, remember, Jupiter in Taurus is going to be a 12-month transit, and it's not changing signs. Even when it retrogrades, Jupiter will stay within the sign of Taurus. So this is a big deal. We haven't had that for like two plus three years. Um, 
the other thing as well, this is uh, higher love or even higher forms of communication could be coming in for you at the moment. Uh, and if you've got any matters of legalities, because the ninth house is uh, legal matters as well, if you've got anything like that going on, uh, or there's something that you want to wrap up or get done or seen to, this is a perfect transit to use actually. Uh, it's bringing growth to you and what you want to say. So for those of you that are writers, whether that's scripts, books, uh, plays, films, whatever it might be, this is your time. Knuckle down, you've got 12 months to create something truly spectacular and then throw it out to the world because the ninth house is broadcasting as well. So that's a YouTube channel. If you've ever thought of starting a YouTube channel, this next 12 months is your time. Uh, right, you're getting that bang for buck with this. If you want to put out a podcast, if you want to share, you know, uh, sell a book or anything like that, this is your time. Use this transit. And then finally, um, put foot to butt, right? This is also a spiritual house. And as such, this could see you really tapping into because Jupiter rules the future and it also rules vision and prophecy. So for some of you, you might be able to, you might start to develop a precognitive and or potentially, not for everyone, but like your aptitude, your own chart. There are going to be a lot of factors to this, but as a broad sort of scope, this potentially taps you into the ability to, to make prophecies. So my Virgo people, or people with strong emphasis of Virgo, I will be checking in with you uh, several times. <laughs> All right, for this, you've got the Seven of Swords. Okay, so Jupiter rules integrity. The Seven of Swords is can be lies and deceit. So this may very well be that Jupiter moving into that ninth house reveals something to you that hasn't been in its integrity. Then you've got the Ten of Swords, okay. And then you've got the Three of Cups. So in order to get to the good stuff, you've got a little bit of crap to go through. And what that tells me is, especially with the Ten of Swords and the Seven of Swords, this is a piece of knowledge or information that comes in that completely ends one chapter so that you can go on to a much brighter one. So it's kind of like, you know that moment, um, I don't know if you've seen any of the Harry Potter films, but where they're in the divination class and Ron says to Harry, well, it says that you're going to suffer, but you're going to be happy about it. And he ends up meeting his godfather and he finds out that there's a whole backstory, right? This is very much something like that. Something here is coming to an end, right? And that's the, uh, and then with that three of cups, it's like in order for the next chapter to begin, that thing needs to come to an end and it's actually, uh, you'll be welcome for it, all right? Finally, the last transit that I want to look at is on the 21st of May, Mars is moving into the sign of Leo uh, into your 12th house, right? So the 12th house, hidden zone. It's the part of the chart that houses the connection to the spiritual or the other otherworldly realm. This can bring you a lot more active dreams, for sure. Uh, potentially more violent dreams or a bit more intense or a bit more vivid. Uh, it may also be a past issue that comes up for resolution. So remember, Mars is a severing or a cutting energy. And for that reason, when it comes into the 12th, it can bring situations that maybe we brushed under the carpet or we tried to ignore. And it can get us to say, right, okay, this needs to be addressed. And now I'm gonna cut it out at the root so that it's done. Uh, it could also see you ending or getting rid of a bad habit. This is a good time to tap into that kind of energy as well. Now that being said, it is opposing Pluto, right? So as Mars comes into the sign of uh, Leo, it's going to oppose Pluto. Uh, so that's going, you know, that's going to bring its own sort of energy of intensity. And as if that wasn't enough, it's also going to be squaring uh, Jupiter. Uh, in the sign of Taurus, uh, but it's also sextile to the sun in the sign of Gemini, which is your 10th house of career. So this is kind of like, it's potentially you have a blessing here or an opportunity that comes up, but it's like you can't fully enjoy it or be totally present with it because there's something or someone in the wings or in the background that's kind of getting in the way of that blessing. Um, finding a way to manage that, I think is probably gonna be the way forward. To clarify on this, you have the Four of Swords, very interesting, take your time with it. And Leo had this same card in this same position for this transit, so I'm intrigued. Then you've got the Hermit card, right? So this is definitely taking time out. 
in fact, you know, the, let's say the 31st, uh, not the 31st, I would say the 20th, the 21st and the 22nd of May, if you can take a break, take a weekend break, be unavailable, don't be on social media, whatever it might be, uh, you know, spend time in quiet contemplation, meditation, etc. I would totally advise that and the cards are definitely telling you that too. And then you've got this with the Emperor card. Um, if there are any sort of legal matters that show up for you, this could likely, it, in the long run, it has the potential to help you rewrite something, right? But you have to kind of initiate now and dig in for that long haul. So let's say you've got like really bad credit. This could be something that shows up for you that helps you kind of you're just like, right, I'm, I've got a job where I'm earning a hell of a lot more money. Maybe you speak to a financial advisor. That's a very good thing to do with this energy for sure. Um, maybe you speak to somebody and they say to you, right, okay, in, if we can do this in six to eight to 12 months, we can have you here, but this is what it's going to require. The work that needs to be done to improve some personal situation that's maybe been plaguing you from the past shows up now. But because it comes through the guise of the hermit and the emperor, there's work to be done. I mean, you're a Virgo. It's not a problem to you. You know, hard work is, is something that is like the milk to you. Uh, okay. Let's have a look at the weeks of your month for the first week of May. Ooh, okay. Your card has jumped out, your first card for the, the month. You have the Sun card. Oh, yeah. Look at this, right? So, uh, happiness, joy, levity, uh, also light and true self authentic self uh, authentic self expression is coming in here the other thing with the sun card sometimes this card shows up just to say like whatever is happening this first week you basically sail through it it's a lot easier it's a lot clearer then you've got this with the full card so for those of you that don't want any more children this first half of may handle your business um, because that is a very fertile energy, but it could just as easily be um, that this is a trip that comes up and very spontaneously at that. So for a lot of you, it does look like this first half of the month, there is travel, there's potentially making babies. There's also uh, good news around a personal project that you've been working very hard on or towards completing. For the third week of the month, you've got the temperance card. So this with the full card, I, I mean, I love this for a few reasons. The first one, this could be you coming into an understanding of a dream, a hope or a goal or a wish that you weren't really sure that you had. It's kind of like maybe it's just been a secret desire at the back of your mind that every so often you unpack it and you have a little daydream about it. And then but then something happens this month here in the third week of the month where you almost have a minute where you're like, okay, now that this thing has happened or this person has showed up in my world, that thing that I only ever really dream about and never really talk to anybody about is actually possible. Something seemingly impossible becomes probable here, right? Like, and I don't say this lightly. The other thing with this as well, this could be some kind of spontaneous or remedial uh healing or energy that shows up for you especially because you're going to have that sixth house activation it will be intense but also the way through will show up with it so it's kind of like it's almost like the universe lays down a gauntlet and says well you know here's this thing or this resource or this person that can help you achieve this what are you going to do with it and it's kind of up to you for the fourth week of the month you have the world card okay right so not only are there new uh, new goals and dreams suddenly becoming possible, but with that world card, um, this could be a connection to a community of some sort that really amplifies you. It could just as easily be that you reach a new, ooh, excuse me, it could just as easily be you reach a new level and you start to realize uh, who is next to you, right? It's like, wow, okay, these people that are stood next to me or connected to me right now, they can actually help me achieve what I'm trying to. Um, yeah, I like this, I like this a lot. 
Uh, okay, and then finally for your moons. So, for the new moon in the sign of Taurus, you have... I'm not going to go into great detail on the moons because obviously you're going to get your uh, full moon and your new moon report. So for the Taurus new moon, you've got the gate 43 and ahead. So that new moon for you in the ninth house is giving you a glimpse into the future. Um, for many of you, you know, I've told this story before and I will continue to tell it because I'm so humbled and honored. Uh, Denise uh, Matthew, the lady that designed this deck, when she created this deck, this was the card that she dedicated to me. And I am super chuffed and super proud that I get a card within the deck. Um, and this message basically represents being able to see the potential in something before anybody else does. Pay attention to what you're being given in terms of messages, feelings, dreams, things that show up for you around that uh, new moon in Taurus, because the chances are you're going to be seeing something that nobody else understands the value of until later. And then that full moon lunar eclipse in the sign of Scorpio. Uh, OK, so look, this gate 62 practicality energy I do feel that it is about practicality, but one of the other things that I often attribute to this card is, does it make sense? All right, so whatever shows up for you around this full moon, whatever is revealed to you, even if it's something that you don't like or something that you kind of feel like, oh, you know, well, uh, you know, you know, sometimes when you learn something and you're like, I wish I didn't know that. Because now that I know it, I can't unknow it. I can't unsee it. Does it make sense? So if somebody comes to you and says, look, you know, so-and-so has said this about you or, uh, you know, this, this and this. And you're like, oh, does it make sense? When you look at the nuts and bolts of it, does it make sense? All right. There's something that you guys do really well anyway. But I think that that eclipse in Scorpio it's going to be intense for a whole bunch of freaking reasons. And I will also say as well, this is potentially a money card in that you might realize, okay, I need to get clearer on what this element of my finances is doing or not, as the case may be, or does it make sense? With that said, I wish you an abundance of all of that good stuff. Have a fantastic uh, month. Let me know in the comments how it shapes up. Take care and I'll see you soon.